With Statistics for Action, what you're trying to do is to make sure that everyone in the room feels informed and comfortable with the data that describe environmental conditions in the community. Part of the troubling thing about being in an environmental justice community is people don't necessarily have the background or the educational tools to fight what they know isn't fair. Getting everyone to look at data means that everyone has a better ability to talk to others about the conditions in the area. Communities confronted with environmental toxic exposures need to understand and communicate risk. Whether you live near a rail yard, a chemical plant, refinery, Superfund site, wastewater treatment plant, or any other source of hazardous pollutants, the first step in fighting for environmental justice is quantifying risk. People are living with the effects of water, soil, air pollution, and deserve to understand what are those contaminants, what levels are they at? How are they fluctuating with the seasons? How does the intensity vary from place to place around the community? Back, back in 1998, when they were starting the planning for the Cesar Chavez High School, there's a lot of us that were opposing it because of the siting school issues. There were numerous research and studies done after that that indicate exactly what we were saying. And still to date, the school behind me sits here they should be doing something about it, but they are being silent and they're pretending that nothing's happening down here. And again, the data here is all that we had, but it reflects the, the amount of toxic emissions that were being released into the air. They argued that for us to not build a school here or for them not to be, not build a school here is we have to show harm. In other words, that somebody's been hurt. And, and all we could go back to is again to the community. Well, there's, there's cancer, there's leukemia here. Isn't that enough? It's important for a community to have the tools to understand not only the visual harms, but those hidden in mountains of data as well. In the spring 2011 issue between the change agent and Statistics for Action, we set out to do just that. We combined anecdotal stories with issues that hit close to home and we wove in different ways to understand mathematical and scientific terms. For example, we worked on picturing parts per million or a drop of ink in a large kitchen sink. Throughout the magazine and throughout the website, we are always striving to go deeper into an issue. I was staying at my grandmother's house and I heard all this ruckus, so I went to the park and Tejas was there and they were talking about environmental impacts coming into the neighborhood and pollution. I went back home and told my grandmother about um, a hearing that they were going to be having and she asked me to let them know that we didn't want any more pollution in the community. She's always been aware that there's been health impacts because we all grew up with asthma and we all grew up with respiratory issues and, and so she, she knew that there was something in the air that was making us sick. The information I heard at the hearing was a whole new language to me and it was very difficult for me um, to even understand what was being talked about. Uh, so it was even harder to translate it to a different language. We pride ourselves on having a free, online, organizer-friendly website at sfa.turk.edu. We've created a guide for organizers to filter through our material based on suspicions or concerns the community is having to the best SFA option available. We then take them chronologically through important steps such as learning the basics, gathering data, exploring strategies, and making your case, all in the effort to make it easier to teach and communicate complex mathematical and scientific terms found in environmental results and reports. El entrenamiento al que asistimos nos ayudó mucho porque aprendemos 
cómo la importancia de tener monitores en el área donde estamos viviendo también nos ayuda a reconocer los avisos de contaminación que antes no conocíamos. Eh, sí, podemos explicarle a los amigos o a la comunidad eh, lo mismo que es muy bueno tener esto porque nosotros también podemos medir los niveles de contaminación que tenemos en nuestra área. We know that doing one SFA activity will not make anyone an expert, but it will give us the practice and know-how of what to look for and where to look for it, ultimately empowering communities to ask smarter and better questions and leveling the playing field. The neighborhood of Manchester in Houston's East End is getting organized and using research and science to educate itself on health impacts of exposure to hazardous air pollutants and particulate matter. Community members are in the process of studying the air with plans to look at soil and water in the near future. Manchester adult residents are getting trained as community health workers and younger residents are participating in environmental youth summits connecting them with other communities across the country. Together, they are leading trainings on chemical security and demanding answers from political representatives. They are documenting upsets, flares, and identifying other point source pollutants in the area. They are doing all of this with data, science, and technology. Here at Tejas, we will continue to use Statistics for Action materials and resources to help communities better understand risk and organize for change.